up with this song, Holy is the Lamb. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength.
song saying, your name alone is great. It's higher than the heavens. I give you all the praise I lift my eyes to. Our worship is from the inside. Amen. church. Wow, that was a fun start, huh? Okay, about the third time we will stand and give glory was your cue to stand. And you know, you can stand when you sing, just so you know next time. It's okay to stand and sing praises. All right. So everyone, we welcome you. This is a congregation of saints. We see this over here with our little angel and sinners, of which I am the greatest. Um, but redeemed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we're very excited to have Teresa preaching today. So TV Vaughn is here to bring us the word. I have gotten to know her, um, not nearly as much as I would like to, but she is full of love and compassion. And so we're delighted to have her. And she is a fierce advocate for others. So again, welcome TV. Um, I have a card. It's a Halloween card. This may be a first for me. A Halloween card that says, thinking of you and smiling to happy Halloween. And it's a sheer joy becoming a part of Christ United Presbyterian Church. Your newest member, William Forte, which is Dr. Forte, who is now an usher. So he get he is like the 
I would call them the poster person for what it means to become a member of this church. And um, if you'd like to become a member, please uh, speak to me. We'll get you settled into doing that. We would love to have you and thank you, William, for your card and for your service. That's just amazing to me. There are certain things that are very easy for pastors to do and there are other things that are more difficult despite the good and great news. And the great news is one of our saints has entered the kingdom triumphant. For us, the heaviness of heart is to tell you that Edie Grease was called home to the Lord yesterday. And Edie was 95 years full of grace and love and care. And so uh, she passed away very peacefully yesterday. Our elder um, NL and Enid, his bride, was with her at the time. Um, but she needed a dance card because in the last several days, many of us went to visit her. And uh, they, if you knew Edie, here's a story about Edie. And if you're watching online, this is why you should be a part of this church. It's just incredible. You would go to see Edie and you would visit her, bring her communion, and then pray for her. And then she'd grab a hold of you and go, baby, I have to pray for you. And she had a prayer that was far better than anything we could have thought of. What a saint. Yes. Heaven Amen. is singing glory, glory, glory for her faithfulness. Yes. I do not yet know when a service will be held, but we will certainly let you know. You'll hear later that the men have a fellowship hour in memory of Edie afterwards, but um, Carolyn will tell you more about that. Let us now turn together for the call to worship. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Honor and majesty before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Let us stand and sing together. Awesome in this place.
believe that God forgives you. That God forgives you when we ask for forgiveness. That God forgives even a body of believers, all of us gathered together. Scripture said, if my people will humble themselves, seek me and ask for forgiveness, I will forgive and make them whole. Will you please join me as together we pray the prayer of confession. Merciful God, you have unlimited knowledge of all events, and you know us even better than you, we know ourselves. Yet we confess that we often fail to trust your divine wisdom and care. Grant us, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, the ability to trust you in a deeper manner. Let us continue in prayer silently, just bringing your own heart to the Lord and confessing what you need to confess. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. Surely God is our salvation. We will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is our strength and our defense. He has become our salvation. In Christ Jesus, we are forgiven.
Good morning, church. Good morning. I come uh, with two brief messages. First, from the PNC, I'm delighted to report that Pastor Kerry Allison will begin with us on December 15th. It's his first Sunday. We welcome him in the midst of Advent season. Uh, we're all looking forward to his, um, to his arrival. There will be an installation service in late January. The exact date is not set, but we plan to do installation of him, giving him some time to settle in, get Advent uh, launched, and to invite the proper folks to that event and really have it done right. So December 15th, beginning with us, installation service in January. My second announcement comes as chair of the uh, finance committee. And I want to encourage you all to pledge, all members to pledge. Cards went out in the mail. If you didn't get a card, we have them in the back as well. So I encourage you to prayerfully, mindfully, thoughtfully think about what your contribution can be for the year. This pledge is aspirational, not legally binding. So we understand that life is what happens to our plans. But we always try to uh, lay out in an aspirational way what we can give how we can support the church. And getting your cards now is important because we plan for the year's budget in uh, the fall. So knowing what you can give will help us to know what we as a church can do. Your cards are due November 3rd, which is gonna be Pledge Sunday. Thank you. Good morning, church. Good morning. There are several announcements in the bulletin, and we encourage you to read all of them and become involved in the life and ministry of Christ United. I'm just going to highlight a few of them. I'd like to welcome our very own Teresa Vaughn to the pulpit today. The men are serving as spread in honor of our beloved chartered member, Edie Grace. May she rest in heavenly peace. Amen. October 31st, trunk or treat, we desperately need more candy. If you can um, donate the candy and have it by the church office Wednesday, 1030, we would appreciate it. We also need cars, for Trunk or Treat, please talk to Pastor or Director of Music, BJ, after church today. Uh, today is PW Bible Study after worship. November 10th, Veterans Recognition. Recognition. We will honor our veterans as part of our Sunday gathering. If you are a veteran, please join us in worship. December 15th, Christ United Christmas Pageant. People of all ages are invited to participate to our annual Christmas pageant during worship. Rehearsals will be on Sundays after church beginning November 3rd. Please contact Jessica, Dana, or BJ for more information. I will be reading Joshua 1, 9. I hereby command you be strong and, cur and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Holy wisdom, holy word. Praise Good morning, church.
make the tribulation. You'll emerge victorious. God is there to protect you from trials and poverty. He'll make you happy, not blue, in spite of calamity. Be strong in your confidence. Keep the light of hope alive. The Lord God is your defense, letting your spirit survive. Ask God for strength and power inside the house of worship. You should never surrender to sufferings and hardship.
family. Hallelujah. It's so good to be with you all today. Now, I know some of you are looking at me saying, okay, how does all these people know this girl? I mean, where does she, who is she? Some of you don't know me. Some of you are wondering, well, where has she been? <laughs> so I'm just going to catch you up a little bit on the goings on of TV. So again, my name is Teresa Vaughn. Thank you, first of all, for allowing me to share God, the Word of God with you today. I thank God for this day because it's the day that he's made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. I don't care what happens. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what people say to me. I don't care who cuts me off on the road. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So um, my name is Teresa Vaughn, but I go by TV. So I haven't been here lately because I'm now a chaplain, being a chaplain at uh, Scripps in Encinitas. So I go there on Sundays and I'm with the patients there. I typically see palliative patients, patients that have advanced illnesses and chronic illnesses or maybe at end of life. And you all know that that's the thing that I do. That's my thing, right? Um, I still have my home. I still have my mom. She is now 90 years old. 90 years old and the best in the house. Now I have a full house. When I purchased my home back uh, right before the pandemic, I mean right before the pandemic, I asked God, I said, you bless me with a home, I wanna be a blessing to others. So we purchased that home, the pandemic hit, I had international students in my home, my mom, caregivers, and we had a ball. Um, and so then after people just saw that what great care my mom was receiving, because I have a care team with me, a young lady said, Teresa, can you, can you watch my mom? And I said, sure. So she came in for daycare, and now she's there on hospice. But she's been on hospice for a year and a half, right? Because only God knows the day and the hour, correct? And when you receive the proper care, support, on a daily basis, and you have that will and that drive, you can go for a long time. I've known people on hospice for years. So it just all depends on the situation. And then after that kept, kept going on, and this young lady kept doing well. When I say young, she's 92. Um, we have a, another lady there that um, she's 80 something, and, and she has a little bit more complicated health issues, but she's there, and I'm telling you, the nurses that come in are amazed at how well she's doing um, because of the care team that's in my home. And as you also know, I have adults with learning disabilities. So I have two, well, one and a half. So you might not have seen Joey here lately. Joey came for a time. He was a really tall guy, really big, um, but he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Wants to come back, but you know, sometimes things just don't work out. And you know that Allie, who was here with us today, who is here with us today, she is also in my home. And um, she is a joy. A lot, a lot, a lot of work, but a joy. So I'm Indeed. thankful, I am so thankful. And I also have an international student in my home. So I guess you said, well, how many rooms do you have, girl? <laughs> I told the Lord, I will pimp out my house. Excuse me, I'm using a word that might be a little offensive. I apologize. But I want that house. If there's a corner that somebody can go and, and, and utilize, they can have it. I'll sleep outside on a tent, literally, so that somebody else can be a blessing. We have people living in our, our world with... 10 bedrooms, five bedrooms, three bedrooms, and one person. And you have all these folks with no place to live, or they're lonely, or they have all these situations. And I, those are the people I see on a daily basis. In addition to being a chaplain at Encinitas, you know, I have my own business called As a Mall because my specialty is an advanced care planning consultant. I typically work with patients that have advanced illnesses and or advanced age. And so I go to I sit with, meet with them and talk with them about their care, uh, their goals of care, the health care options, who's going to speak on their behalf if ever there was a time they couldn't speak for themselves. And that's not a conversation we should have when we are old or really sick. That's a conversation we can have at any season of our life, because anything can happen to any one of us at any time. And our goal is to care for you from now until you take your final breath. Because can you agree with me, family? that one day we all will take our final breath. Am I, am I right? That's not, it's not new to anybody, right? I'm not a Debbie Downer, it's just something that will happen. And as Pastor said earlier, we lost our beloved Miss Edie. 
and I was planning to go see her today. That was on my things to do list. And she said, not today, boo, you had your chance. I'm going to be with the Lord. And so she's in a much better place. So I, I just, ha I love being able to journey with her over the years. And so another thing that we do, my home, is we will go see some of the sick and shut in. We have just a few. You know, I have so much extra time on my hand. <laughs> so I, I try to see a couple of people um, just to check in because some people have no one to visit them, no one at all. And so I encourage you, family, to, to reach out to someone. If you know them or if you don't know them, check in on them. Folks need to know that somebody cares about them, somebody's thinking about them. So you may not see me here. I may not be in the, the house of the Lord, but I am doing the work of the Lord, okay? I just want you to know that. Amen, amen. And so I wanted to share the, uh, uh, the theme today, a message on fear not. Fear not, why? Thank you for asking. So we're in a Hall Halloween season where we have ghosts and, and goblins and, and witches, as you saw Ali uh, dressed as today. And so the, the goal is to scare people, right? To, but it's supposed to be for kicks and, 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 and fun, right? And we're gonna have our own trunk or treat. Again, for kicks. I grew up with trick or treat. Anybody else grew up with trick or treat? When it was safe and you could actually go to the neighborhood and, <laughs> and get candy and not be afraid what it was laced with. So I grew up trick or treating. I grew up uh, with homemade costumes because we were poor. So it might be just a sheet or just some drawings on our face and a paper bag. <laughs> but we went out. My mom made sure we all went out to have some fun. And, um, and so today, Allie and I, and our entire family, we try to celebrate every holiday. We try to keep the spirit of joy within our home. But the thing about it is, as believers, we don't have to operate in fear, amen? We do not have to operate in fear. Doesn't mean we won't have any. And I wanna make that clear. It doesn't mean we won't have fear, but we don't have to operate in the fear. Allie oftentimes, because of her condition, she wrestles a lot with depression and fear. And I'll tell her, Allie, try, just hold on to my, 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 my coattail. Just, just hold on to me. Because I, I, really, I really feel like I'm not afraid of anything. We have people that come to the home that it makes her nervous if they act out or if they raise their voice or if um, anything happens. I mean, I've had to do all kinds of things to protect the people in my home and I will protect the people in my home. And so the police have had to come a time or two and it makes her fearful. And I tell her, honey, don't worry, I got this. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna take care of this house. So don't, she'll be afraid for me sometimes. Therese, I'm afraid for you. I said, don't please, don't, don't borrow fear. <laughs> Cause I don't have the fear. Don't carry it for me. So we have to process through that. And luck, luckily and thankfully to God, we have a team to help us process through those feelings. Cause fear, the feeling of fear is real. If it wasn't, God would never have to mention it in, the, in his word, right? He talks about it because he knows that it's going to be present. We live in a fallen world. Fear is real. It's going to be present. But the, the beauty of it is that God didn't give it to us. Right. He did not give us that. So let's look at 2 Timothy. And I'm going to read 2 Timothy 3 to 10, okay? 2 Timothy 3 to 10, because I want to give it a little bit of context, a, a context, a little bit of substance. Paul writes, I thank God, whom I serve, as my ancestors did, excuse me, Timothy, as, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as, as day and night, I constantly remember you in my prayers, recalling your tears. I long to see you, so that I may be filled with your joy. See, so you see there, we, we kind of, we support each other. Sometimes you might not be feeling 100%, somebody else's joy kind of carries you along, right? So that's why you have to be careful who you surround yourself around. Because what, when you're around another person, they're feeling a little um, uh, gloomy, you might be the person that lifts their spirit, right? I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois, and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded also lives in you. 
For this reason, I, am re I remind you to fan the flame, the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. So you see, there's something we have to do, right? You have to fan the flame. You can't sit there and say, Lord, I'm just feeling melancholy today. Lord, I'm just feeling down and depressed today. Lord, I'm just, you, we cannot give in to that because that is the thing that will keep us stuck. This time of the year for many people, and particularly myself, can be challenging. Um, call it seasonal affect disorder. Now some people say, I don't receive that. But this time of the year, I tend to feel a, a little different. And I've acknowledged that that happens, right? So what I do is I purpose, I fan my flame. I fan my flame, I call my friends, I read my word, I pray. I fan the flame, the gift that God has given me. It's not a spirit of fear, but he's gonna tell us what it is. For the spirit of, that God gave us does not make us timid or fearful, but gives us power, it gives us love, and it gives us a sound mind or self-discipline. I say again, it gives you power, because you need the power to love some people. You need power, right? Love and self-control, or you have um, a, a confidence. He's giving you that spirit. That's what God has given us. Has, has anyone else received something different from God? Is this, is this new, new information? No, I just want you guys to feel free to interact with me because this is God's word. And if we don't operate in this, we will give way to the feelings of fear that I told you, they do exist. They exist. He also says, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me in the suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it, it, but it has now been revealed by the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who, and I need you to listen to this closely, it says, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immorality to light through the, through the gospel. I think I need my little water over there. So there, Jesus Christ destroyed death, right? So some people say, well, why don't we stay? We have eternal life. There's something after this. And so then he tells us, don't mourn like unbelievers because you know that there's another life after this. So, we, so when, we heard, when I heard about Miss Edie this morning, I said, no! That was my initial reaction. I mean, she's 95, she lived a great life. I know she's going to a much better place, a place that she has um, been preparing to go all of her life. Thank you so much. <laughs> has been preparing to go. Now she's entered there. She entered there. And just as Pastor said, you'd go there and pray with, with Miss Edie, and she said, well, let me, honey, let me pray for you. She was cute as a button, skin like chocolate butter. I don't know if you didn't know her. I mean, just smooth as butter. And so I enjoyed going to see her and all our parishioners um, because to me, visiting the sick just does something in the inside of me because I know that many of them don't have visitors, or uh, Miss Edie was blessed, she was well-loved, but sometimes it's the other people at the facility that was also blessed and could see people coming in, because when we would come in, the church, uh, Christ United, we would all come in and say hi to everyone and minister to everyone, because it wasn't just about one person. We're coming in as vessels of Christ. So what is fear exactly? What is it? I read in a book once, fear is false evidence appearing real. I say again, false evidence re re appealing real. So sometimes things aren't even true, but we're so afraid that we will just 
pull away from some, certain things. We have blocked our own blessing because of our fear. There, you can have a fear of so many things and it can block you from receiving all the things that God has for you. So we can become our own uh, worst enemies, if you, if you will, because of that fear, allowing ourselves to operate in that fear. I'm sure that you can recall an, ins an instance in your life where you, could you just imagine a worse thing happening, right? Like, you know, maybe somebody said, uh, yeah, Teresa, I need to talk to you. I'm like, oh man, what do, you want, what do you want to talk to me about? Did they know about this? Did this happen? I mean, I ran through a litany of things, and they, I go and talk to them, and they said, we just want to say, you did a great job. But in my head, I practiced all of these things that I thought was going to happen. And they're like, why do you do that? I'm like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I do that. So that was something I had to work through. Because oftentimes, it's not the, the bad things that we practice in our heads because we carry the Spirit of God. So just know that this weapon of fear is something that is, has not been given to us by God. It is something that has been given to us that exists in the world and, and, and shows itself through our enemy, right? Trying to block what God has called us to do. So I ask you, what are you afraid of today? Or maybe, maybe I'm sitting in a room of, of people who don't have any fears. Is that right? Y'all don't have fears? Yeah, no, yeah, no. Yes, I heard a yes. yes. Over here, okay, yes. So, so it's not just me. I just wanna make sure I'm not talk, speaking to people just, you're all very courageous without fear. Because remember, actually, if you're courageous, you're gonna have fear, right? Because having courage is not the absence of, of fear. It's, penetrating through the fear. So I know I have them. When I purchased my home, that was fearful. You're talking San Diego, California, where houses are $10.5 million, right? That's fearful. Am I gonna be able to make this payment? What's gonna happen, blah, 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 blah. That was fearful. And then whenever you invite people into your home, you don't know what you're gonna get, right? I don't care how long you know them. You don't know what's gonna spring up. So, and then when you bring people together, you don't know what's going to happen. So the more people you bring together, the more chances for drama, and we have our own little drama, but that's okay. I don't let that stop me from doing what God has called me to do. Amen? Amen. And I'm sure all of you, I, I'm not the only one here, we do what God has called us to do, and that's what, what uh, to me, what um, people who are extraordinary, that's me. Uh, when we are extraordinary, you do extraordinary things. You do things that other people can say, no, nah, I can never do that. I'm, uh -uh, I can't do that. But, and it's not like it's easy. I do it in spite of the fear. And I keep going. I've had four clients like, like Allie, my adults with learning disabilities, and when one acts up and needs to leave, I said, bring another one because I want to be a blessing to this population, I can feel it, and I love it. When we get along and we do wonderful things in the community, I expose them to some things that they've never seen in their life. And so it's a blessing to be a blessing to someone else. And if you've not done that lately, I encourage you to be a blessing to someone else. That, that in and of itself will kind of subdue any fear that you're having, because you're not so focused on yourself, right? Sometimes we get so caught up in our head about our own selves and what other people are saying about us or what I should have done or where I should have been in life or am I getting old or whatever it may be that's going on in our head that we, are, we, we block the opportunities to be a blessing to our, our community, to our families, and to ourselves. And oftentimes I will peel away and go camping or go get a hotel and I spend some Teresa time because there are a lot of people in my house and I need to keep some sanity, right? So I have to pull away to take care of, do some self-care. And I don't have any fear about that either or shame. I don't care what people say. I need to take care of TV so that TV can be a blessing and take care of other people. Yeah. Right? Amen? So if that's something that you struggle with, I encourage you to look at yourself and say, how can I provide better self-care to fill in the blank. Because when you have a big heart, you, we tend to take on so much, right? The plate is this big. Please, Lord, don't let this fall and put on the floor. So, uh, the plate is this big, but we filling it up. 
with all kinds of things, right? And it could be me, maybe I'm the only person that does that. I'll have this little plate and I'll fill it up, fill it up, and then I have to try to balance it. And so sometimes I have to take some things off and then make sure I do some self-care. But again, I, I don't operate in fear. I served 25 years in the military, yes, I joined when I was five. And so, um, because remember, I am still 25. I was 25 when I last came here, still 25. And so, um, and yes, I have gray hair now. <laughs> See, I don't even, that doesn't even uh, phase me. A lot of women, they, they dye their hair because they don't want to be gray. I buy gray hair and put it in. So yes, that's what I do. Okay, that's my story. But I love it because I don't have a fear of aging. I don't have a fear of dying. I, I don't have any of those fears because it's a part of life. Right? It is a part of life. So what are some of your fears? What are some of your fears? Just think about it. Maybe you're say, saying to yourself, I don't, I don't, Teresa, I don't, I don't have any fears. I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Well, what about some of these? You may, be, you may have a fear of the unknown. Anybody have the, ever had those fears? Just that fear of the unknown. Like, I just don't know what it's going to be like to get married, to live with someone. I'm in a horrible marriage, but I don't know what it's going to be like to live by myself, right? I need to quit this job, but I don't know what it's going to be like if I, if I don't have this job. We can have so many fears of what's on the other side that we know not of that we tend to sometimes make a bad decision. Let me tell you a story. There once was a criminal who had committed a crime, which is why we call him a criminal. Um, Anyway, he, had, he was sent to the king for punishment after his, his crime. The king told him he had to choose from two punishments. So he, get, he got to choose. He said the first one is he could be hung by a rope. That's the first uh, punishment. Or he could take what's behind the big, dark, scary door. But he had to choose. Well, the criminal quickly decided, I'll take the rope. And as the noose was being slipped around his neck, he turned to the king and he asked, by the way, what? I just out of curiosity, what's behind the door? The king laughed and said, you know, it's funny. I offer everyone the same choice and nearly everyone picks the rope. So the criminal said, well, tell me, what's behind the, what's behind the door? I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna tell anybody, right? So the king paused and answered, behind the door, my friend, is freedom and forgiveness. But it seems most people are so afraid of the unknown that they immediately take the rope. So my question to you today is how many of you are taking the rope when maybe you should be trying that big door, but you're so afraid of that unknown I just want to challenge you. Just want to challenge you. I want to push you. Again, I reference Miss Edie Grice because I felt like she, she always would remind me, you know, I was a charter member. She was a charter member here at Christ United. And she all, whenever she could get to church, she tried to come. She was definitely a trooper. And I remember her specifically telling me, you know, she said, you know, baby, now I'm not afraid of dying. I'm, I'm not afraid of dying. I ain't trying to get there today, but I ain't afraid of dying. And so she, she said, because she's been preparing all of her life for what she believes is in the hereafter. And so um, I ask you today, is death something that you fear? What I find amongst my patients is that oftentimes, and I'm gonna say this, and many of you are gonna miss some, somebody might get angry with me, may disagree with me, and that's okay, I don't, I don't mind that. But I have found that a lot of times my patients that are clearly at end of life, and we're not talking about, oh, maybe they were diagnosed with cancer and then they you know, could beat it, but I'm saying clearly at end of life, um, there's just this huge resistance to death as if it is not in their face very pending. And there's, not, there's no conversation about it. 
as opposed to taking that as a very sacred moment. I see that as a very sacred space. I've seen reconciliation happen in the, in the midst of, of the de death and dying. I've seen um, people who have just made amends or made, uh, be being able to say things to their loved ones that they've never been able to say. I've seen family members come to the side of their loved ones whom they hadn't seen in 20 and 30 years. Amazing things happen. I've sat down with patients and families, and we're, they're telling the story of their loved one, and we're laughing and having a ball, and they're like, I can't believe I'm laughing here um, while my father is passing away or has died. And they said, but you're telling me his story. And his story sounds like he was a man of joy, of laughter. So this is who he is. This space we're creating is just creating a picture of who he is. And that time has brought them peace because they had the opportunity to have that time. I had a, pay, uh, a client, excuse me, I was doing a community presentation once, and this lady came up to me and she was in tears. And she told me how her husband had had cancer and, and he wanted to, um, they were doing treatments. Um, and then at the like 10th hour, maybe 11th hour, they called in hospice. But before the nurse came out, he passed away. And she went to the oncologist and said, what happened? Why did this happen? We would, we would not have wanted to treat, treat, treat until the very end. We would have wanted to spend time together. And the doctor just told her, well, I'm not, it's not my custom to tell people when they're dying. She was livid and she was crying. And I asked her, I said, when did this happen? She said, 10 years ago. So at this point, she was still hurt because she was robbed of an opportunity to spend time with her husband, just valuable time to hold his hand, kiss his face, give him the foods he enjoy, as opposed to going back and forth to the hospital for an intervention that did not cause him to live long, it just caused his last few days to be not like he wanted it to be. And although this topic is something that most people don't like to talk about, it is something I, I'm freely, I'm very comfortable in this space. When my father passed away, it was a beautiful experience. I, I show, shared that with you before. I'm one of six, the youngest, the prettiest, and the favorite. That's my story. And um, when my father was dying, I spoke with him on the phone, and I said, Daddy, he died in 2012. I said, Daddy, if you need to go and be with Jesus, it's OK. We'll take care of Mom. Now, I never thought I was going to have her for eight years. My mom's been with me for eight years. <laughs> I don't know if you guys realize she's been with me for eight years now. And um, I said, we'll take care of her. I said, but I am coming home, Daddy, but if you need to leave before I get home, it's okay. So I set my flight for December 28th. My father passed on December 29th, but I got to just hold his head and kiss him and sing songs with him. It was beautiful. And I was the only person standing there when he took his final breath. I said, wow, he felt so comfortable leaving this world with me standing beside him. I was there with him when he left this world. He was there when I came into the world. It was a beautiful experience. But if we can maybe reframe the way in which we see end of life, when it is end of life, I think people's experience and their outlook with the death and dying process would be different. And I'm an advocate for that. Granted, I'm not talking about homicide, suicide. I'm not talking about things that are, 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 are aggressive or, or traumatic. I'm, I'm talking a whole different kind of death, OK? Because, because it's something that will happen to us. And there's a death that can be beautiful. And from my understanding, someone was there with Miss Edie holding her hand when she was, when she was in her final stages. Oh, I'm telling you, if you all don't know the beauty in that sacred time when a believer is going on to be with the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't, I mean, to, I just, that to me, I live my life today for that day. And I've told my siblings, don't suspend me in air so that you can say I love you or say your last word. Say them to me right now. Because when it's time for me to go, I want to go be with the Lord. I ain't rushing it. I ain't trying to do anything to, to hurry it along. But when it's time, I'm, I'm ready. I'm good. So I ask you today, what are your fears? What are, you, are you living in any fear that's keeping you from enjoying the moment? Is there something, somebody you can reach out to to say, hello, I love you. I miss you. I got a text from my brother who never texts me, he never. He's a great brother. You call him, you need something, he's there. But he's not that kind of person that will call you. But he sent me a text. He said, I just want to let you know I love you. 
and I was thinking about you. And I said, is he dying? <laughs> because that was so weird, right? Well, come to find out he had been in the hospital and he, he was a little afraid. So he sent me a text, but I thank God that he sent it. I wasn't offended, I wasn't angry. I'm glad that he reached out to me, that he loved me enough to say, sister, I do love you and I want you to know that. I've already lost a brother, so to have him just do that meant so much to me. So I encourage you today, call someone, visit someone, do something good for someone else, and do something good for yourself. Don't live in fear, don't operate in fear, because God ain't give it to you. It's from the enemy. You have power, you have love, and you have a sound mind. And I don't care if you got dementia, because let me tell you, my mother has advanced Alzheimer's dementia, and she's the best in the house. She is the best in my home. She has a sound mind, okay? So don't let that be the thing you think of sound mind. No, 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 no. It's an honor to care for my mother. It's an honor to clean her, change her, do whatever I have to do. It's an honor, because she did it for me, and I was a handful. So I encourage you, again, check out your fears. I'm, I know I might be going a little long, um, but I just want you to, I don't want us to operate in fear. We have too much to do for the kingdom. Yes, yes an election is going up. Don't live in fear. Amen. Go out and vote. Amen. Get out there and vote. And whatever the outcome is, you know who's ultimately in control. Okay? Who is ultimately in control? Amen? Amen. So thank you for your time. May God richly bless you all. It's so good to see so many friendly faces. And I love you all. But let's not operate in fear. Amen? Amen. 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 Fear not. And I'm a little angel.
thank you to all the wonderful music and musicians. And let us now join our hearts in prayer, bringing to the Lord those things that are on our hearts. Let's pray. Gracious, merciful God, let us in faith call out your name to be saved from our fears, be ransomed by your trust, and to forever rejoice in your greatness. May the radiance of your presence shine upon our faces and through our eyes as a beacon to draw us all near to you. Merciful God, empower us to hold fast, to stand strong for truth, mercy, and justice before the leaders of our world, our country, and community. In these difficult times filled with war, conflict, and political rancor that dishonors all people who you created in your image to reflect you, not political agendas, powers, or intimidation. Save us from ourselves, Lord God. Strengthen us to open the eyes of those blinded by self-interest, political machinations, and other oppressive conditions that do not fulfill your love for all your people. Merciful God, comfort all who are burdened with serious illnesses, addictions, and or emotional distress and grant energy and peace to those who give them care. Here are prayers for Jennifer Henry, Esther Gomez, Bob and Karen Lee, Schaefer, and all those in our hearts today. Gracious God, in the midst of sorrow of our temporary loss, we give joyful thanksgiving for the glorious welcome that you have given to our beloved Edie Grice, who has entered your eternal kingdom. Lord, we continue to pray for her whole family and also for Jennifer Logan's family and all others that are on our hearts. Lord, we lift up those who have physical and mental challenges, who so often are neglected, marginalized, and dismissed in the church. We thank you, God, that you have called us to be a whole church of people from every tribe and nation, of people who welcome the stranger, who bind up wounds and walk the difficult journey that so many experience in their lives. Let us be acutely aware of making space for everyone, of seeking to know them, their gifts and talents given by you to rejoice in our common connection of Christ our Savior. Gracious and merciful God, we offer our thanksgiving for TV's word today, for our praise team and musicians, for all who participate in facilitating worship this morning. Bless our ushers, our video and sound, our behind the scenes faithful, who serve others to honor you. May we be a courageous people, leading you, our God, king and ruler of all so that others might know you we pray this in jesus name who taught us to pray together saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite the ushers to come forward at this time, please. We know the needs of the church, the condition of our hearts towards sharing. Let God guide you in your giving. For God is abundant in grace and in giving us gifts, which he has lavished on each of us.
together dedicate these gifts. God of grace, full of love and sacrifice, take these offerings and use them to your glory. Through the leading by your spirit, help our session in distributing the funds for the church community and the world that they might know you and your son Jesus Christ in whom we pray, amen. amen. Perfect love cast out fear. So may the perfect love of God fill you and be with you. Share that with others as you go. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen.